go to work on yourself harder than you work on your job. If you work hard on your job, you can make a living. Then he said, if you work hard on yourself, you could make a fortune. So I worked hard on my job and made a living, but I learned, starting with those extra hours per week, learning these extra skills, I started working on myself. And here's a philosophical phrase everybody should take home. Here it is. Success is something you attract by becoming an attractive person. Success is not something you pursue. It's what you attract by becoming attractive. By becoming attractive to the marketplace. What would do that? Multiple skills? Multiple languages? So, now what else would help you to be attractive to the marketplace besides more than one skill and more than one languages? Could perhaps, like it did for me, multiply your income by two and then multiply it by three and then multiply your income by four and then by five and once you get there it's not that difficult to multiply it by ten because all you have to do is make sure you become more valuable and more valuable and more valuable you don't have to work on the economy because here's the first note each person's income is determined primarily by their philosophy not by the economy once I understood that then I said well I don't have to go to work on the economy and the answer was no you only have to go to work on yourself to make yourself more valuable so now here's five things I want to share with you and the first one is your personal philosophy what could get you more prepared and ready for cashing in on the opportunity of the 21st century and here's the first one personal philosophy your personal philosophy is like a guidance system that helps you make decisions what to do what not to do from the information you get and what you learn and what you know we decide maybe your philosophy would have been uh, five years ago never to attend seminars like this you just didn't go now five years later here you are something happened along the way to change your mindset saying hey for the money and the time if I just get one good idea and walk away it certainly is worth the money and the time so now that little amendment in your philosophy you now say I'm gonna regularly go because it doesn't take but a few ideas to make a great difference in your income personal life social life and all the rest so now you know that's valuable a change of mind a change of idea so that's what personal philosophy is all about the more we learn the more we know the better we're able to make better decisions about two major things your philosophical guidance system does two things for your notes number one helps you to see the dangers on one side so you can avoid those but here's what else your guidance system does personal philosophy helps you to see the opportunities on the other side so that you can expand those maximize those and here's what that's called the game of life is to minimize the dangers and maximize the opportunities and the more we know and the more we learn the more experience we gather in sessions like this from the sermon on Sunday morning to the books we read and all the rest helps us to keep continually adjusting our philosophical guidance system so that we minimize more dangers maximize more opportunities that's really the game of life I couldn't put it much more simply so number one we're affected by what we know now how do we know more things and learn more things that'll help us readjust our thinking so we can avoid the dangers maximize the opportunities here's number one learn from personal experience one way to learn do, to do something right is what first do it wrong right mess up and then you say wow that was costly I'm never gonna do that again so one way to learn to do it right first do it wrong sometimes a negative experience turns out finally to be positive they say if you survive your first heart attack you may now live to be a very old person why is that well that first heart attack if you survived it is called a wake-up call 
and maybe the doctor said, one more of these and your history. And you said, wow. And you make it for the health food store. And you start reading every book you can find on good nutrition, how to avoid another one of these heart attacks. And you start jogging and start walking and doing all of the stuff. And this total change of lifestyle could now save your life and cause you to live to be a very old person. Here's what my mentor said that's some of the best advice I ever got. He said, Mr. Rohn, if you will change, everything will change for you. If you'll start making personal changes, your income will change, your health will change, your future will change, everything will change, if you're willing to start making the changes. So sometimes a negative experience now causes us to really make a sudden shift in our philosophical guidance system that says, hey, I'm never going to let this happen to me again. Fantastic. Now here's the next way to learn, and that is to learn from other people's experiences, whether they are negative or positive. It's too bad failures don't give seminars like this. Wouldn't that be good information? Now we don't want to pay them so they don't lecture, so. But their information would be valuable. If you know a guy that's messed up his life for 40 years, you have to say, John, would you spend a day with me? And I will bring my notebook and take good notes. A good looking guy like you, beautiful family, every reason to do well, threw it all away. Teach me how for the last 40 years you messed it all up. And he tells you, and you take good notes. Learning from the negative side of someone's experience. If somebody tells me these eggs are rotten, I'm not going to make an omelet and try it, right? I'm just going to take their advice and their know-how. So. Learn number one from your own experiences and learn number two from other people's experiences. And my mentor taught me to always keep a journal. Here's what he said, don't trust your memory. If you want to live a dynamic life, multiplying your income, multiplying your future, be a good student. If a good idea comes your way, write it down, then ponder it, then perhaps go do it. Okay. Now. Your philosophy comes from what you learn, comes from what you know, comes from other people's experiences. Three ways now to learn from other people. Here's number one, learn from what you see. One of the great watchwords of these early years of the 21st century, pay attention. If you just watch, you can pick up clues. Success leaves clues. And if you'll be a better observer, of the winners and the losers, those that are doing well and those that are falling behind. And just take mental notes and good notes and say, I'm going to adjust what I'm doing based on what I see. Here's number two. We learn so much from other people based on what we hear. Here's good advice on that. Be a selective listener. Listen to voices of value that have experience, ideas, reputation, something valuable to share. Now here's number three, read all the books. Now there's millions of books, so you can't read all the books, but make this note. Read all the books you need to read to make you as wealthy as you want to be, as healthy as you want to be, as prosperous, as productive, as unique a human being as you want to be. To be. Read all of those books. Don't leave those books go unread. My mentor got me started on my library when I was 25. I got one of the best. If you saw my library, you would be impressed. I haven't read everything in it, but I feel smarter just walking in it, right? My library. I was smart enough to buy it all. Now I got to be smart enough to read it all. Now jot this down. When you do read, you have to sort through what you read and decide which is valuable to try. That's part of the process of learning, gathering information and sorting through it. One, the information that would apply to you and what you think would be valuable based on your current philosophical opinion. So read all the books. Our lives are greatly affected by what we learn and what we know.